Hi, I'm Naomi Oreskes, and my book is Merchants of Doubt, and the book is about how a group of scientists became involved in challenging the scientific evidence of global warming and many other environmental issues. Yeah, I'm a historian of science, and my specialty is earth science, which comes out of my background as an earth scientist. I was a working scientist for a number of years before I became a historian, and I was doing work in the history of oceanography and studying a transition that had happened in oceanography where oceanographers had mostly worked uh, with the U.S. Navy in the 50s, 60s, and 70s on issues having to do with the Cold War, mostly surveillance of Soviet submarines. And there had been for some time a small strand in oceanography that had been concerned with climate change issues, going back to people like Roger Revelle. And in the late 70s, as climate modelers were starting to become concerned about climate change issues, oceanographers said, oh, well, we have something to contribute to that because we know a lot about how the ocean will respond to global warming. So I started reading the scientific literature to understand the science, because as a historian of science, I usually start there. And when I did that, I realized that a couple of important things. First of all, that scientists have understood that global warming was going to happen for a long time. Second of all, that there was a consensus in the scientific community that there was no question among climate scientists and oceanographers, atmospheric physicists, that global warming was in fact now happening. And three, that there was this enormous gap between the way my scientific colleagues were talking about it and the way it was being presented in the media. Mm -hmm. And that was really the crux of the story that I started becoming interested in. That, well, if scientists have been working on this since the 1950s, and if they've understood the basic parameters of the problem since late 70s, mid 80s, then why is the media presenting this as a raging debate? And so I started doing a little work, a little investigation, and then that's when I stumbled upon this connection with the tobacco industry. Well, I think one of the things we realized from the story is the media have really done a terrible job of presenting the, you know, the evidence, the information, what scientists have learned. Uh, it's, it has not been accurately portrayed in the media. I mean, if the purpose, if the goal of the media is to portray a topic accurately, the media have really not done that in the cases we talk about in the book. And so I think it, it's tells the ordinary person that they have to be really careful about what they read in the media and they have to understand that the media's attraction to conflict causes them to exaggerate the small number of people who disagree. The other thing they need to understand, and I think if you read the book, you will understand. <laughs> I don't have to say you need to understand it, you will. You'll see this if you read the book, is that um, the media don't really do their homework, unfortunately, about who these people are. So very often there's an article that will present well, certain scientists disagree, and here's you know what they say, but the media don't explain that in many cases these scientists are a very extreme minority. So you know we have the IPCC that involves thousands of scientists uh, from all around the world, experts who have been researching these topics for decades, you know, and then we've got one guy, right? So you know this is often presented in the media as if this is you know a kind of level playing field, but in reality it's really thousands to one. Now, of course, that doesn't mean the one is always wrong. We know that sometimes the one is right and the thousands are wrong. You know, I'm a historian of science, so of course I know that, and we all understand that intuitively, but then you have to ask, who is the one? And that's really the crucial question that the media failed to ask. And what we show in the book is that often that one is the same guy who didn't believe that there was an ozone hole, didn't believe that CFCs were Im implicated, didn't think that secondhand smoke killed babies, which it does. Um, you know, and so there's a pattern here, and it's that pattern. It's the connecting the dots. And that's really what we feel is the cr crucial contribution of this book. I mean, there are many pieces of the story that you've probably heard little bits of here and there before. But what we feel we've done is to connect the dots, to show how there's this very consistent, repeated pattern, um, and it often involves the same people over and over again.